An outbreak of dengue fever is challenging some countries in Asia. South China's Guangdong province confirmed close to 12,000 dengue fever cases on Monday, according to the Provincial Health Department. The Provincial Health and Family Planning Commission reported that the number has risen sharply this year, up by nearly 1,700% compared to last year. This year's outbreak is believed to be the worst in 20 years. Japanese officials are stepping up their efforts against the first outbreak of the mosquito-borne disease in 17 years. Japan's Minister of Health, Welfare and Labor blames the outbreak on global warming. I think it's important that everyone keep in mind that because of global warming, what used to be unthinkable in a climate until now can happen. And I have told the people working in the health ministry to expect the unexpected and handle the situation accordingly. I walk on the street, and so while I don't normally think to go inside, it becomes scary even just walking on the street itself. I wonder what would happen if I got bitten by a mosquito. Dengue virus is a leading cause of illness and death in the tropics and subtropics. There are no vaccines to prevent infection of the virus. And observers say global warming is a result of climate change, a topic that was discussed last week during the United Nations General Assembly. Climate change has also been linked to some health challenges. For more discussion on the subject, we are joined by Reid Dechen, Vice President of Energy and Climate with the United Nations Foundation. Mr. Dechen, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. When Glad we talk here. about climate change, what are we looking at specifically? Well, you know, Leonard, I think a better term is climate disruption. Uh, because the pollution that humans are, are causing with fossil fuels, oil and coal and gas, uh, in their factories, in their power plants, in their cars and trucks. It's heating up the atmosphere and making the world warmer, and that's changing the weather patterns uh, in unpredictable ways. So are humans the cause of climate change to some extent then? Very much so. Uh, not exclusively, uh, but uh, whether it's the use of fossil fuels or deforestation, that's another principal cause of climate change. So let's talk about the impact, the health impact of this phenomenon on humans' health. In general, around the world, what are we observing? Well, I think that there are two kinds of impacts. One, we just saw an illustration about dengue fever or malaria. Uh, mosquitoes uh, are restrained by how hot or cold it gets, and so they can't go to the same elevations if it's colder. Uh, a city like Nairobi is built at a certain elevation uh, and as the temperature gets warmer, the mosquitoes uh, and the diseases they carry uh, become more prevalent in a city like that. Uh, you'll also see uh, changing rainfall patterns and mm -hmm. that affects water quality and it affects food supply. Food security, yes. And then the, the ones that make all the news are the big extreme weather events, whether it's a drought or a flood or a big storm or a heat wave. These have direct impacts on people's health. So given that humans are partly to blame for climate change, what can we do as humans to prevent it, or at least uh, ensure that it doesn't go to a dramatic extent? Well, again, there are two categories of answers. We can reduce our use of fossil fuels and move to uh, renewable energy, may be more efficient in our energy use, uh, but we can also prepare for the impacts that we're already feeling and that inevitably are going to get worse. So when you mention fossil fuel, what exactly are you talking about? Well, we're talking about coal uh, in power plants or uh, gasoline, petrol uh, in uh, cars and trucks. Uh, and that's uh, causing pollution that is leading to climate change. So in Africa, what will be, we hear a lot about solar power. Will that be a solution, the best solution for Africa? Or what other alternatives can we, can we explore? Well, we've seen just dramatic changes in the cost of solar energy and wind energy, which are inexhaustible and clean. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is increasingly attractive as a mainstream power source, uh, particularly in areas that don't have existing electricity power plants. Uh, so we think that uh, economically as well as environmentally, these are going to be much more attractive options. So then moving forward really quickly to, for someone to, to really protect themselves against, against climate change, is there such a thing as a one, one solution or it has to be integrated, a holistic approach? 
Well, I think we all have to work together on this. But uh, one example, since we're talking about health, we need to strengthen our health systems. Mm -hmm. We're seeing with the Ebola outbreak, because there was not a good health infrastructure, there was very little capacity to respond. The same thing is true with any of these diseases we're talking about related to climate change. And so we need to bring electricity to health clinics uh, so that they have uh, power to uh, treat people, uh, whether it's childbirth at night or uh, uh, an acute illness. Uh, and uh, through the UN's Sustainable Energy for All program, uh, we're undertaking at the United Nations Foundation with the World Health Organization and UN Women a program to bring electricity to more health clinics around the world. Yes, to Dechen, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. And that was Reed Dechen, Vice President of Energy and Climate with the United Nations Foundation.